This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. And now for today's thrilling Nick Carter adventure, The Case of the Blue Mink, presented by Old Dutch Clan. As our story opens, Nick and Patsy are entering a large department store very early in the morning. Just Nick, I didn't know you were retained by the Fur Protective Association, too. You've probably forgotten, Patsy. It's been years since they've had occasion to call on me. Oh. This new series of fur thefts is really serious, they tell me. And you think this department store is the best place to catch up with them? I do. They've suffered the biggest losses of any store in town so far. Oh. Come on, here's the elevator. Mm-hmm. Oh, four, please. And you think I'll be able to spot it if I see one? Oh, I hope so. As a rule, women who steal furs have a large receptacle of some kind, a bag or bundle in which they can hide the furs while they make the getaway. Also, they have a sort of shifty look about them. You watch closely. You've had a lot more experience with the crooks than most sales girls, I'm passing. Gosh, I hope you're right. I'll try anyway. All right, come on. This should be pretty well. Miss Cheryl, the detective on this floor, uh, said she... Mr. Carter. That's right. You're Miss Cheryl? Yes. And this is Miss Bone, who's going to be our new sales girl. Oh, well, for a while, anyway. I only hope I can make good. Oh, I'm sure. I hope so, too. Now, if you'll come with me, Miss Bowen, I'll show you where you can leave your things. Oh, just a minute, Miss Cheryl. Me. Suppose I see a customer who looks suspicious. What do I do? Call Miss Cheryl if you can, and call me. Then keep your eyes open and don't leave the customer for a second if you can help it. All right, Nick. I hope this works. Wish me luck. Just use your common sense, Patsy. That's always better than luck. So long. <laughs> Carter speaking. Nick, this is Patsy. Ah, oh, Patsy, how do you like being a clerk in a department store now that you've had a full day of it? Nick, I think maybe I have one of those fur thieves here now. She's got a big bundle, just the way you said, and she's acting queer. Well, where are you calling from? I'm using the phone right here in the fur department. She can see me, but she can't hear what I'm saying. Anyone else there? No. The other girl who's usually here at this time had to leave early. Went home at 4.30, and I can't find Miss Cheryl anywhere. There's just this one customer here, and she's... She's acting awful suspicious. All right, Patsy, here's what you do. Stall her along. Let her see everything in the place, but keep her there until I get there. Uh Uh-huh. What does she look like? Well, she's a rather large woman, dressed in a brown suit and dark red hat with a yellowish sort of trimming on it. Has a big bundle done up in wrapping paper and small bundle and a handbag. Oh, she has a large lapel pin in the form of a horse's head. I ought to recognize her from that description. I'll be there in five minutes and have a look at her. Maybe I'll know her when I see her. Right, Nick. Goodbye. Are you going to finish waiting on me, Miss? Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I was trying to get some other fur pieces brought over from my warehouse. They just got some new ones in, and they're beauties. Do you like anything you've seen so far? Well, this next piece isn't bad, but I want something more expensive. Well, suppose you look around and see if you find anything that suits you better. Oh, I think I will. You don't need to wait. I'll let you know if I find anything. Oh, that's quite all right. I have nothing else to do. How nice. I'll tell you what I really like. When I was coming in the store this afternoon, I saw just the next piece I wanted in the left-hand main window. Do you suppose you could get it for me? Oh, I'm sorry, madam, but I'm not supposed to leave the department. But that's exactly what I want. Oh, won't you please see if I can take a look at it? Well, as you can see, madam, there's no other girl here to watch the stock. I couldn't leave just now. But there are no other customers either. Couldn't you make an exception just this one? I'm sorry, madam. Isn't there something here that would suit you as well? You're a smart girl, aren't you? Smart for your own good this time. How do you mean, madam? Just this. Ah! Oh! wonder if Patsy's mistaken about this woman. It could be, you know. I doubt if she'd call me, Waldo, unless she was sure of a fact. Ah, sure, Nick. But you know women always jump at it. Big bundle, brown suit, red hat, and horse head pin and a lapel. Yes. What are you stopping for? That's the woman Patsy called about. You sure? I am. The description mixes exactly. Come on. But, Nick, you, you can't arrest her without some kind of evidence. I'm not going to arrest her, Walter. We're going to follow her. I want to find out where she goes. Well, then what? Then I'll find some excuse to take a look into that bundle she's carrying. Unless I'm greatly mistaken, they're furs. Stolen furs. <laughs> Well, 
When you look at that line at the ticket window, I never knew so many people went to the opera. Mm. Just 8.15, half an hour before the performance starts. Well, why in the world? You had to get us down here so early, I can't see. Well, I had to be here to see if that woman walks through this lobby. Miss Bowen, suppose we're wrong about this. Oh, yes, and Miss Cheryl, how can we be wrong? It was right after that woman left that we found that wad of gum folded up in this envelope, didn't we? Right where she was standing when she knocked me out. And it wasn't there before. Yes, that's true. But we don't we know, know it's she... a ticket broker's envelope. And calls for four seats for tonight's performance here at the opera, don't we? Yes, and but if the tickets that were in this envelope belong to her, she'll be here tonight. And I'll recognize her. Oh, I wish Mr. Carter were here. Oh, so do I. But I've been calling him for the past three hours and no answer. What? Even Waldo's gone. So we've got to find out for ourselves who's sitting in R2, 4, 6, and 8. I guess you're right, Miss Bowen, but... Oh, I... don't you worry. We'll work it out somehow. Oh, look at that gorgeous fur coat on that girl just going in. Hmm? It's blue. It's blue mink. That's all blue mink. That was stolen from our store. Are you sure? Certainly I am. It's the only one in this city. There are only three of them in the world, and the other two are privately owned at the West Coast. Oh, that mousy little girl wearing it couldn't be a third thing. Well, she's got our coat on. That's all I know. We've got to get inside and get back. You got your ticket? Uh, yes, but how about... I've got nothing. I'm going in. Take it, please. The label of the coat you. will prove it's ours. Oh, no, it won't. The first thing a thief does is to change the lining and the label. You've got to be sure before you accuse her. But I am sure. That's the... Oh, wait a minute. Look where she's sitting. In R4. One of the seats marked on the envelope. Oh, she's a thief. But she's not the one who was in the store. We've got to wait here and see who sits in those other three seats. Then we can capture them all at once. <laughs> We've been following this dame through all these little towns for a heck of a while now. Do you think she's going anywhere? Well, either she's taking a very roundabout way to where she's going, or she knows we're following her. Well, I'm going to see where she goes if it takes all night. The whole first act is over, and nobody is in those other three seats. And I'm not going to wait any longer. I want that coat. Wait. She's going into the lobby. And she's leaving the coat in the seat. Uh, let's go down and casually take it. Take it? What about her? We want her, too. Come on, follow me. I have an idea. But easy yes. now. No, 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 don't hurry. Oh. Now, let's just sit down here in these end seats. I don't like this. I don't like it either, but I think it's the best way. Well, now what? We'll get up, and the coat goes with us. Like this. Nobody watching. You've got more nerve than anybody I ever saw. Now walk up the aisle. Slowly. Well, don't hurry. Yeah, that's it. Do you see that girl who had the coat? Yes, she's over there at the drink stand. If she should she see... won't. Come over here behind this pillar. Now, here's my idea. She must be one of the thieves, but she's not the one I want. You take the coat back to the store, and I'll wait here and follow her after the show. Maybe she'll take me to the rest of the gang. But she'll make a whale of a fuss when she finds out that her coat's gone. It's a stolen coat, isn't it? Oh, let me look at the label. Oh, this is a parrot. Label. There never was a blooming coat made in Paris. That's what I told you. The thieves changed the label. So it must be the coat stolen from your store. Now, you go ahead. And I'll... Oh, oh, oh. If you want to stay healthy, just walk quietly out the door. I want on the left. Don't look around. Hey, you Start can't... walking and don't run. I'll be right behind you. Come on, Patsy. We'd better walk. Yes, I... Uh, I guess we better... That's it. Now, you see that dark blue sedan up the street a little way? The tall girl gets in the front seat, the short one gets in back. And no argument. Where... where are you taking us? You'll find out by and by. When you do, you won't like it. Now get moving. Let's... 
pause right here. More from Nick Carter. In the case of the blue mink, Patsy, together with Aris Alicero, floor detective for a big department store, recovered a blue mink coat which had been stolen from the store while Nick and Waldo were on the trail of a suspected fur thief. But just as the girls got the coats back, they were forced into a strange car at the point of a gun, bound for an unknown destination. The time is now a few minutes after intermission. Sergeant Matheson of the Metropolitan Police has just arrived at the office of the Opera House in answer to a strange summons. Oh, oh no. The coat has a beautiful blue fur coat. It is good. It is good. Look, Mr. Helbine, I can't make heads or tails out of this. What's this blue fur coat she keeps talking about? Well, I don't know, Sarge. In a mission after the first act's about over, when this girl sets up a holly, you can hear three blocks away. Yeah. Here's we can make out, she had a blue fur coat that disappeared. She's been practically in hysterics ever since. I thought maybe you could get the story out of her. Yeah, some job you wish on me. All right, you. what's your name? Gussie. Gussie Farmwood. All right, Gussie, uh, what happened? I have a blue fur coat. I go outside to get a drink, and when I go back, it is gone. And she will kill me. I know she will. You mean the coat was stolen? No, no, no. I do not steal it. I, I borrowed it to go to the opera. No, 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 no. I don't mean that. Did somebody steal it from you? Yes, they steal it. And now I cannot go home anymore. Did you see who took it? No, it is. God, that is all. I tried to get up here before, but I couldn't get away from a fussy old dame out front. What is it? Is that anything wrong? I'll say there is. Just when intermission is about half over, I saw a man force two girls to walk out of the lobby and get into a blue sedan parked just down the block. And I could see he had a gun in his pocket. And I heard him say, when you find out where you're going, you won't like it. All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. You sure of this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm the doorman here, you know. I was standing just outside. I heard it as plain as I can hear you what now. What kind of a man was he? He was, uh, uh, well, well, he was an ordinary man, like a, a businessman. Only a pretty hard boy he was. And one of the girls had a, a blue fur coat with her. A blue she... fur coat? Did you say blue fur coat? Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Why? So two girls stole Gussie's coat and somebody stole them. Can you describe these girls? Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. One of them was a sort of a tallest... Yeah. I want that description of the two girls sent out to all precincts at once. Yes, sir. Let me know as soon as anyone gets a lead on them. Yes, sir. I want my call. I want my call. Now, look here, Gussie. I brought you down here to headquarters so I could talk to you quiet-like without nobody butting in. Now, where'd you get that coat you had? Oh, please, mister. I do not feel it. I, I Hi, just... Make... Oh, hello, Nick. Hey, what you got there? A bunch of fur. That'll be all stolen. Patsy called me from the department store where I planted her and told me a customer she had was acting funny. Yeah. So Waldo and I started down to have a look at this woman and met her coming out of the store. I recognized her from Patsy's description and followed her. She led us right to the old factory building where they remodeled the stolen furs. Hmm. I found a workman there relining the coats and brought them both in. Oh, nice going, Nick. You say you're on a stolen fur case yourself? Right, Nick. One with a twist to it. What's the twist? Well, it seems that Gussie wore this blue fur to the opera and a couple of girls stole it from her. And some fellow, the doorman says, was hanging around before, pulls the gun on the two dames and forces them into his car. Looked as if he was waiting for them. Any descriptions of the man? Sure. Girls. Yeah, the doorman at the opera saw the whole thing. One of the girls was about 45, short, kind of blonde gray hair, blue eyes, wore a dark blue suit with Not a... Not a shell. But, you know her, Nick? But the description of the other girl fit, Patsy? But, by George, I believe it would. You think it was, Nick? Heavens. Patsy and Miss Cheryl, the floor detective at the store, doing a little detecting on their own. Maddie, they may be in trouble, real trouble. I remember now. Miss Cheryl told me a blue mink coat was stolen from the store a couple of weeks ago. Somehow they got on the trail of it. And someone got on their trail. Well, we've got to find out about this in a hurry. Gussie, whose coat was it? Do I got to tell you? She killed me, sure. You certainly do got to tell me, and quick. It was the lady I worked for. She always gets new fur coats all the time. So I just took this one to go to the opera with. Anybody home when you left? There was a little girl, Virginia. She maybe she could see me. Does she know where Father and Mother were tonight? Oh, yes. Her mother left her the telephone number. It was in 
Oak Dale. Hey, Maddie, let me have that phone, will you? Yeah, what are you going to do, Nick? To find out if it's Virginia called her mother to tell her Gussie has taken a coat. From what Gussie says, it's very likely she did. I thought we saw Gussie go out with a coat. Yeah, but Nick, I... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Operator, this is Nick Carter. I want to find out if a call was made tonight from the Dutton residence in Cedar Ridge to someplace in Oakdale. Yes, that's right. For the love of Pete, Nick, what's the connection between this kid and a guy kidnapping Patsy? Look, Matty. Gussie said Mrs. Dutton was always getting new fur coats, didn't she? Yeah. Well, that looks like part of the fur gang. So if this kid phoned her mother that Gussie was wearing her new fur coat, her father, who's probably the head of the gang, drove into town as fast as he could to get it back before it was spotted as a stolen coat. Why, sure. Well, got to the opera house after the show started, so he hung around. That was where the doorman saw him. Yeah? He probably missed Gussie in the crowd at intermission, but saw Patsy and Miss Cheryl. So he took them and the coat, which is what he really wanted. Well, for the hey, love of... Wait, wait, wait. What's that, operator? Well, there was. About 7.15, huh? Thank you. That's all. Let's see. Dutton got the call around 7.15. He could have driven down in about an hour and a half. We should get him to the opera house after the show started. Yeah, that checks. Yeah, but look, Nick, if Dutton has got the girls, he certainly wouldn't take them to his home. And where would he take them? And what would he do with them? Matty, that's what we've got to figure out, and fast. <laughs> What a dirty old place this is. If it was going to lock us up somewhere, he might have picked a pleasanter place than this. If we only know where we were, maybe we could figure out some scheme to let somebody know. Huh? If we could only... Oh, there he comes back. Oh, I hope well, it's you not... You weren't alone in this, huh? How do you mean? You told somebody else about the coat, did you? Well, no one... Oh, could... yes. Yes, we did. Right after we found it. Then who'd you tell? Speak up. I, uh... I called Nick Carter and gave him all the details. Yeah, I thought so. Somebody's been here and taken all the furs and working the storage vault in the basement. Took my tailor away, too. Just called his home and they haven't seen him. Don't know what's happened to him. Why don't you tell this, Carter? And no funny business. Oh, well, uh, you, you, you see, we, we told him that... Listen, you, stop stalling. If you want a little while longer, give us the details and make it snappy. Well, the girl who had the coat at the opera gave us your names. And when I called him, I told him your names and where you live. <sighs> Where do I get my hands on that Gussie? I'll wring her neck like I was a chicken, stealing my coat and blabbing everything she knows. Well, what do we do now, Eddie? Well, let me think. I... Yeah, I have it. Young lady, you're going to call your Nick Carter on the phone. There's an old abandoned hunting shack out in the woods about two miles off Route 47. You're going to tell him you've caught the fur thieves and that you're stuck on them without any chance. <laughs> While Nick is conferring with Matty at headquarters, Waldo sits in Nick's office, waiting for the next development in the case. You're in Nick Carter's office. Nick Carter's first assistant, Waldo McGlynn, speaking. Is Nick there, Waldo? This is Patsy. Oh, no, Patsy, he ain't. Uh, can I help you? Put him on, will you? I tell you, Nick ain't here. Do you want me to... Hello, Nick. Oh, I'm so glad you're there. This, this ain't Nick. This is... Yes, uh, Nick, it's all right. We've caught the fur thieves we were after. But this ain't Nick, Patsy. This now, is listen what... carefully. Very carefully. This is extremely important. You must be crazy, but I'm listening. We chased the thieves way out of town in Miss Cheryl's car. And just as we finally caught up with them, we ran out of gas. Nick, I want you to come out and bring us all back to town... I don't dare leave the thieves to look for any gas because they might get away. But we caught them thieves ourselves. We... Now, get these directions straight, Nick. Better write them down. Write them down. Now, we're near an old hunting shack on a small side road that turns off Route 47 about three miles north of Woodmere. Three miles north of Woodmere. You got that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the shack is about two miles in off the main road. Huh. We'll be waiting for you inside the shack. Hurry up, will you, Nick? It's awful lonely out here. You better hurry. He's awful worried about you, Pat. Yes, about two miles. But we caught them, Nick. Hallelujah. We caught the crooks. Bye. Well, if that ain't a crazy... I gotta get this to Nick immediate here. Hallelujah. We caught the crooks. Uh, that ain't the silliest thing I ever... Sergeant Matheson. Oh, this, this is Waldo. He's Nick there. Yeah, sure. Hold on. You, Nick, it's Waldo. 
Yes, Waldo? Uh, Nick, I just got the doggondest message from Patsy. From Patsy? Where is she? Well, now, now, keep your shirt on while I tell you this. She kept calling me Nick. I told her it was Waldo, but Yes, she yes, kept... yes, Waldo. What did she say? She said she got the thieves and ran out of gas at an old hunting shack. About two miles out on a small road that turned off Route 47 about three miles above Woodmere. And she's waiting there for you. Did you say anything else? No, that's all. Do you, do you know how she ended up? Well, naturally not. What was it? She says, Hallelujah, we caught the crooks. Hallelujah? You sure? Well, sure, I'm sure. I ain't if you know. Thanks, Waldo. Goodbye. Grab your hat and your gun, Mary. We're going places. <laughs> You're uh, sure the whole thing is a frame up, Nick? Of course huh? I am, Mary. I told you when Patsy wants me to know she's in trouble, she uses the word hallelujah somewhere in the conversation. Uh, we set that up years ago. Probably the guy who kidnapped her made her send the message, huh? Exactly. He thinks he set a trap for us and that we'll walk into it. Well, we'll string the trap on him instead. <laughs> changed your plan? No. They'll let the car stop outside the shack. And when they start walking in, I'll pick them off. They won't have a chance. Not with this moon. Oh, won't you please? They can see me and I can see them. Oh, God, they're 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 Nick, is that you? Yes, Patsy. Are you all right? Oh, yes, Nick. He was going to kill us after he shot you. Hey, you shut up. Shut up, will you? How about the guy, Nick? Looks pretty bad, Matty. How do you live to pay the penalty, I'm happy to say. And after I finished talking to you, or rather to Waldo, he took us to that shack to wait. Oh, Nick, I was scared. She certainly was, Mr. Carla, but not so much on her own account. She was afraid that you might get hurt. I was afraid somebody might get hurt, maybe killed, and I didn't want it to be... Uh, the wrong person. Well, that's highly commendable of you. Oh, just think. If Gussie hadn't borrowed the blue mink, Patsy and I might not be here. Oh, please. That's not exactly a cheerful thought. Patsy, there's one thing I still don't understand. When you two found that ticket broker's envelope with the seats marked on it, why didn't you go to the police instead of trying to handle it yourselves? Well, well, to tell the truth, Nick, I just didn't think of it. Hmm. I suppose it's because, well, as a rule... We don't go to the police for help. They usually come to us. Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is a copyrighted feature by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Lon Clark is starred as Nick, with Charlotte Manson featured as Patsy. Matty is played by Ed Latimer, Waldo by Humphrey Davis. Script written by Jock McGregor, storyline by Peggy Mayer. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use Old Dutch Cleanser. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.